The Lena Pope home on the west side of Fort Worth is home to about 120 youngsters, some of whom have been abandoned, some of whom come from unwed mothers, some of whom have been educated by the court to be neglected and dependent. They range in age from infancy to 18 years. Of these 120 children, 33 of them are considered wards of the county. Therefore, the home has just barely been able to make ends meet, with some help from the county, but mostly as an agency of the United Fund. This morning, the president of Lena Pope Home, Rice Tilly Jr., appeared before commissioners requesting that the county pick up what Tilly termed its part of the tab for the children there under county jurisdiction. He presented commissioners with a report showing figures indicating that it cost $10.54 a day to care for each child. The county is currently paying $1.66 per day per child. Lee Hacker, executive director of the home, told me after the meeting that it could get down to the point where the home might conceivably have to refuse to take county children because they simply cannot afford to take care of them properly. The commissioners asked the auditor, the county auditor, to make a study to see if funds were available and could be used for this purpose. Jerry Park, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth. We, of course, follow a policy in South Africa which uh, is designed to emancipate different uh, nations in our country uh, in order to, to uh, encourage them to maintain their own identities and to make this possible. We feel that uh, in this situation, as we have it in South Africa, and by the way, that you cannot by any means compare with the situation in the United States, these are two entirely different uh, the situations. We feel that uh, that is the best way, except for development, as we call it, the best way of uh, reducing friction uh, between different races and ethnic groups, and also to maintain uh, the type of progress that we've had in South Africa.
I think it's going to be a healthy thing for the Democratic Party for us to have a new chairman. The chairman of the Democratic Party in Texas, uh, I feel, needs to be a strong new face to provide new leadership for our party. I feel like that Dr. Baum has been handicapped in the past few months as far as doing an adequate job of rebuilding for 72. Of course, the job now is going to be to replace him. Can you and Governor Smith and Senator Benson, Senator Yarborough all agree on one man? Well, I think uh, that's going to be difficult. I think it's very important for Governor Smith and the other political leaders in this state to recognize that we have 62 members of the SDEC, and I think their wishes and their selection uh, should be uh, given a great deal of weight. It's going to take a lot of people working for the Democrats to be successful, so I think their advice and counsel as far as a new chairman is something that we should all seek. The Dallas Democrats are already working on behalf of Roy Orr to be the new state chairman. Do you think that you could accept Mr. Orr? Well, I think uh, Mr. Orr would be a fine chairman. Uh, he's worked hard. He's been a very fine member of the State Democratic Executive Committee. Uh, uh, Mr. Orr, along with several other people, uh, I could work uh, very fine with. I'm not going to be in a position of trying to get a candidate that Ben Barnes is for or against. We believe there is a need to organize a more representative group so that Dallas area citizens are not misled into believing the present highly stacked and controlled group speaks for Dallas women. We feel that some of the spokesmen for the League of Women Voters are being hypocritical when they ask the mothers of Dallas to favor forced busing while sending their own children to neighborhood schools, either private or public. They claim to favor racially balanced neighborhoods while living in segregated neighborhoods. If they are sincere, would they not voluntarily bust their children to schools made up of a majority of another race? Would they not move to racially balanced neighborhoods if they were sincere? The League's nonpartisan skirts do not appear as clean as they proclaim them to be. Could it be that the League's slip is showing revealing strongly partisan political views. I'm told that less than a half of 1% of the citizens of Dallas either buy subscription tickets to the concerts or make donations to the association. So you see this makes uh, fundraising rather difficult in the city of Dallas. Jack, how many members does this affect? How many musicians? This affects approximately 85 musicians. Do you think some of these may leave Dallas? I'm afraid that if we do not reach an agreement and sign a contract that they will, yes. When is the first date that they're to play? Tomorrow morning, I believe, or tomorrow at some time is the first scheduled rehearsal for the orchestra. This is in preparation of the uh, Fair Park Spectacular scheduled for, I believe, Thursday evening. And of course, uh, it appears that unless we reach an agreement within a matter of almost hours, I had to inform the trustees that we're going to have to call off this fireworks uh, symphony spectacular at Fair Park. Uh, we have other contracts and concerts which we are having to call off at this time. We have to do this in fairness to the people involved so that they won't be anticipating our appearance when we cannot be there. Well, his name is very much in speculation, and of course it's obvious the President has been talking to him. Whether he is going to be nominated, I don't know. Whether he would take it or not, I don't know. 
but uh, in my estimation he would certainly be qualified. He is, at least by my definition, a strict constructionist of the Constitution, and that's what the President's looking for. Taking that into consideration, Senator, do you feel then the President would want to trade a Robert Black for, say, possibly a white or a female? Um, I don't know whether he will appoint a black or a Mexican-American or a female. I think what he's primarily concerned about is qualification. And if a member of an ethnic minority or a woman happens to meet his, his qualifications, I'm sure he would not hesitate to appoint them. Do you think he's making any deals with the opposition since there are two names to be mentioned? I am disinclined to think so. I don't, I don't think he, he would sacrifice anything in the way of his minimum qualification. Now this uh, gas leak probably had been there for quite some time. Uh, there is evidence of excessively high gas bills in the previous month. And uh, it probably had been escaping through the attic area being a cedar shingle roof. Now the heavy rains that we've recently had swelled the cedar shingle roofing and sealed off the attic area where the gas could not escape as it had been. Now, on the particular night uh, of the 3rd and the morning of the 4th, the gaseous fumes had uh, completely engulfed the house. There's evidence that Mr. Pitkin was up at approximately 4.45 a.m., and uh, the source of ignition is believed to be, at this time, a light switch in the hallway. I would uh, uh, would wonder why then we would go to the trouble to. I Here I ran an ad in a local newspaper concerning the spending of money at the state oh, for hearing.
We now have moved to a grandiose cost figure of more than $1,250 per seat for what will unfortunately still be, in my opinion, an inadequate, second-rate, oversized, gingerbread up facility located in what is so obviously the wrong place. And which further, the opera and symphony people I understand do not like and do not think they're going to use. It's my opinion that if this money is spent on the music hall at Fair Park without taxpayer approval, it will effectively kill or set back for many years the attainment by the city of Dallas for a downtown performing arts center. J.A. Satterfield of Fort Worth complained to the council this morning that the taxes on his mobile home are much too high in comparison with what the owner of a fixed house would pay. The reason this is so, according to Satterfield, is that mobile homes are assessed at $100 per running foot for new models. Satterfield says that's just about right because that valuation would include movable furnishings as well as the actual structure, and those furnishings are usually included in the price of a mobile home. The complaint is that other homes are sold without furnishings. The buyer moves appliances and furniture into the house after he buys, so they never appear on the tax rolls. As a result, the mobile homeowner pays taxes on his furnishings, while the owner of a house does not. One councilman I talked with agrees that Satterfield has opened up a can of worms. In order for the city to be perfectly fair, they'd have to either lower taxes on mobile houses or start taxing furnishings in ordinary homes. Other parts of the Fort Worth tax structure have been subject to question, for example, Automobiles are subject to taxation, but no money is collected. Airplanes are taxed while boats are not. If the city staff examination ordered this morning by the council is undertaken and kept open, the whole taxation system of the city is due to be turned upside down. And nobody knows where that will lead. J. Lewis, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth. I don't duck any question in the world. My opinion of Dwayne Thomas as an athlete was that he was utterly superb a year ago. As an individual, I'm not qualified. He is one of the few athletes around that I have not had the opportunity of spending much time with. In fact, I last spoke with him, and then only briefly, at, the, at Gulf's Ocean Mile Inn prior to the Super Bowl game of last year. So I can't answer that question. However, with all of the flack that's taken place, all of the innuendos, implications, insinuations against this man, the fact that he's now reactivated, and obviously still with enormous athletic capacity, I think that's a matter for Tex Schramm to handle perhaps much more openly than he has in the past as Tex sits here. <laughs> The 15th annual International Fortnight was royally open today in Dallas. It was a festival of flowers, complete with their Serene Highness, the Prince and Princess of Monaco. Neiman Marcus calls it the Fête de Fleurs, and it was a crowded first floor of this specialty store to watch Mayor Wise increase our population by two as he made Prince Rainier and Princess Grace honorary citizens of Dallas. Instead of cutting the traditional ribbon, a little water was sprinkled and an instantaneous flower grew to officially open the two-week event. Later, the royal couple held a news conference, and I asked Princess Grace if her movie career had prepared her for royalty. I would say that um, just my experience uh, as an actress uh, 
in general, Sydney has helped me. Uh, as I think uh, being the wife of a head of state, one calls upon every experience in life to uh, to help you uh, through different different moments. But certainly the discipline of, of acting, of being in the theatre, has helped me enormously in my, my present life. Since you married an American, do you by any chance believe in the superiority of American women? <laughs> <laughs> Is there any reason why you came to America to choose a wife? No, I didn't come to choose a wife. I came to, this is the first time I ever went to America in 1966. But I didn't come to seek marriage. Far from it. Not many cities in the world can match Dallas's attractions this week. The State Fair and Neiman Marcus Fortnight. And you don't have to buy anything. For Channel 8 News in the Move, this is Judy Hanna.